This is a lost interview with Max Gilardi, also known as web animator Hot Diggity Demon. It was released around the time he was creating the Pony.Mov MLP parody series that led to his first major boost in success, inside and outside of the online space. Not to mention, this was also posted about a day after Shed.Mov came out and the world awaited more. Max talks about his study at art school, almost creating a Nickelodeon show, and makes very interesting points about the internet versus television production. Even if the two mediums will ever meet someday. In 2022, we're starting to see more of this, as internet culture has gone mainstream. Online creators are making positive jumps to TV or trying to emulate TV's format. Coming back to this 10 years later, it's fascinating to look back on. With everything Max has made since then, and with where we are now. 2012 and 2022 are very different years. Enjoy! So, do what you do. Do what you do. Speaking of people who do what they do, we're uh, going to be ta chatting with a guy named uh, Max from HotDiggityDemon.com. Makes, you... his, makes his own cartoons and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might know him from uh, all the work he's done on Newgrounds on YouTube. He's mm -hmm. done, uh, he's getting a lot of attention for the pony videos that he's done. Yeah. Um, but he's also made short films that have been, they've gotten a fair amount of attention. He's won some awards. Um, the two of them that stand out to me are uh, Jerry and uh, the Northern Incident, which mm. are pretty good. They're really, nice. really good. And cool. I, I like the Pony videos a lot. So, yeah. um, But we're always interested to talk to self-motivated people because we find that uh, you don't see as much as I'd like to. Mm. I'd like to see more people doing their own stuff. Yeah. And just just their own stuff. Yeah. Give us their inside story of why how it works. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. So no further ado, uh, enjoy the episode and... Uh, Let's get talking to this guy. Yeah. Hello? Hello? Hey, man. What's up? Not much, man. How are you? Can't complain. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> you having uh, something to drink or some soup? That's not soup. That's something to drink. Okay. All right. This is going to be a fun podcast. Uh, yeah, I hope I hope so. That's what we're shooting for. <laughs> we shoot for these sorts of things. Exactly. <laughs> An expectation has been set, sir. <laughs> All right. We have a guest today. Yeah? We have a guest today, the very talented Max Gillardi. I hope I'm pronouncing your last name correctly. I tend to fuck that up. Nope! It's Gillardi. 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 Wow, you really fucked that one up. I know. I, I gotta uh, keep my track record going. Pretty much. We can't seem to get any of this shit right, can no, we? Well, fuck. That's why. Are you guys gonna drink too, or I'm gonna do this all alone? Uh, I'll get a drink. I'll all right, back. hang on. <laughs> what are you drinking? Vodka and apple juice. Oh, very nice, very nice. Is that like the guy version of what are you wearing? What are you doing? Yeah, what are you? Yeah, pretty much. Like, what Basically. Are you doing? Yeah. Uh, Since guys are always drinking something. That's pretty sexy. You're drinking <laughs> vodka and apple juice. Are you hitting on the guest already? Yeah. <laughs> all right, man. So, uh, Max Gilardi. Max. Yes. All right. Got that right <laughs> now. Just, for now on, it's Max. Right. Go so for I don't it. fuck it up again. No, no, go for it. I um, will only uh, answer to Based Max. Based, based Max. Max? On this podcast and in life. <laughs> <laughs> so, is that correct? Awesome. Sweet. So, Max, dude, yeah, you make a shitload of cartoons and put them on the internet. That's all I ever do. <laughs> How long have you been doing it for? Um, How long have I been putting them on the internet? Yeah. Maybe since I was like 11-ish. Did you go to school for animation or anything like that? I did, but I dropped out because uh, I wasn't, I didn't really feel like I was getting the education that I wanted. So I went for a year and then I said, that's enough of that. And I walked. Where'd you go? The Art Institute of Boston. Okay. Mm, okay. What kind of program do they have there? It's like three years, I guess? I, guess? I think it's four years. Okay. Uh, my major was animation. Oh, I see. And, uh, you know, I, I only got as in-depth as one year of that will allow. Mm. And maybe that's why I was getting... I, I wasn't getting the education that I wanted. Yeah, but, fair uh, enough. What was I the just, expectation that you had? My expectation was that I was going to learn. <laughs> oh. No, I'd say that's, uh, that's a majority of a lot of cases when, you know... Well, it's it's a common complaint yeah. about school, right? Yeah. Like, I no. mean, even we, we went to school for animation for four years, and then you get out, and it's like we learned a couple of things, but yeah. education didn't really start until you get your ass out there and you start making some fucking pretty, cartoons. Pretty much. To be fair, um, I, th I feel like if you're going to teach kids how to animate, you kind of do have to start at square one. Mm-hmm. And I had been animating at that point since I was like eight. Oh, wow. 
So, uh, of course, everything that they're going to want to teach me is going to be too rudimentary for me. Mm. Um. Well, that makes me sound like an asshole to say, but whatever. <laughs> well, I mean, it's the way it is. I mean, things progress at different levels. People are at different levels, right? Yeah. I, I'm curious, have you ever worked in a studio, or is this kind of like, is this your job? Because um, I was going to say, like, um, we're watching a bunch of your stuff. I was showing Andrew a bunch of your stuff, and the co- like the thing everybody says right away is like, wow, this looks really fucking good. Yeah, mm-hmm. like we were looking at just being like, for a parody, the stuff just is just... It's really, really well done. Yeah, the quality yeah. is really high. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, never been in a studio. And I, you know, I, I guess I can say that it's my job, but it's only my job in the sense that it's what I do all day. Mm-hmm. It doesn't uh, support me financially in any way. And really? I, don't, I don't think it ever will. Or maybe it will. I have no idea. Well, I mean, you've got it's quite a substantial amount of views on YouTube for your videos. I mean, mm-hmm. is there any um, incentive to there to like maybe partner with YouTube and try to like go even further with uh, expanding oh, your stuff? I think that's I already uh, am currently partnered. Oh, you are? Oh, okay. Yeah. But, oh, just when, um, you, when you said that you, you weren't getting compensation for doing this work, it doesn't, didn't, okay, never mind. I, <laughs> no, I, mean, I, am, I am getting compensation. Yeah, yeah. But it's a matter of, uh, you know, like how much is that compensation? Mm. Is it enough to justify the work that I do? Mm, probably not, yeah. but it's something, uh, and it's not—it's not a living wage. That's that's pretty cool, though. I mean, it seems pretty seems pretty rare from based like based off the people that we've talked to with the podcast and just in like with our own careers that people can make any money off their own stuff. Mm-hmm. With what you're doing now, what like you're doing the the pony videos right now. Yeah, uh, which are awesome, by the way. Yeah, they're freaking hilarious. Yeah, um, and I follow you on the Tumblr with Ask Jappalack. Oh yeah, um, and that's I'm the just... first time I've ever heard that pronounced aloud. <laughs> Jappalack. <laughs> I guess that is how you would say it. Yeah. Yeah. Or uh, did I fuck that? Pron- <laughs> did I pronounce that wrong too? I think you just created that pronunciation. Excellent. So there I can't be wrong. No, you yeah. Get up, I guess, for all those other times. <laughs> yeah. um, so I'm just kind of curious. Like, obviously, you're working on the. Uh, the pony videos now do you, what are your like long-term goals are you, i'm assuming you're going to keep doing what you're doing like do you want to move feature because we've heard about people that want to make their own movies and i know bill plimpton's doing it yeah, yeah yeah no for sure i mean he's doing his own independent stuff but i mean he is from an older school of animators yeah so. yeah so i don't i don't really know what i could possibly do long term and i don't like to think about it because when i do i get scared um interesting hmm that's really yeah, no, because stuff, I can relate to that. Well, I was going to say, your stuff is really strong. I don't know what you'd really have to be kind of too scared about when you know that you've got a really strong, you know, portfolio kind of. And that is what your videos are, like a portfolio. Yeah, but it, it, I feel like the second that you start to make a long-term goal, like, I want to do this, that's the second that you realize, well, I can't do that because it's just not possible. This is getting depressing very fast. <laughs> um, that's it. <laughs> No, it's okay. We try to bring the reality of these things into play. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, I've been working with uh, you know Nickelodeon for uh, maybe close to a year now. Um, last year, Nickelodeon they sent me a message out of nowhere, and they were like, you know, we think we think you're the shit. We think you have a creative voice, or whatever, wow. it, or whatever it is that they say to the people that they like. We want you to come up with something for us, and it's it's led nowhere so far but it's still mm. something that i kind of am and I, it's something that i'm still giving heed to in the sense that i'm not going to give up on it for now mm-hmm. i don't know i guess that's sort of an answer <laughs> <laughs> and that could possibly maybe lead to a show or are you working on one of their shows do you think if you can talk about it it's uh you know it was it's it's me having my own show on tv i come up with the idea for the characters and the stories and yada 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 and then they make it that's hmm. fucking rad yeah now, one of the things that I noticed, because I've been watching a shitload of your videos, um, they're all, like, they're all funny for the most part in some way, shape, or form. Yes. But they tend to be very dark. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, with especially with uh, the shed dot move that you released. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm just kind of curious, like, what tends to be your inspiration for that kind of stuff? Like, maybe I'm just a dark person. I have no idea. <laughs> um. That is a good question, and I it's it's almost something that I don't even realize n- until now that you say it. That yes, a lot of my stuff is very 
you know, depressing and kind of cruel. It was morose, and but it has a comedic yeah, sense to I it. Mean, I mean, the comedy's still there, though. Yeah, yeah. We're not saying like, man, you are one fucking dark, depressing. No, guy. I know what you mean. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. Maybe I find humor in people getting hurt. <laughs> do you feel that? I mean, because you're uploading this stuff on the internet, and there are there's no like FCC or anything like that. Do you just try to push as, the boundaries as much as you can, or you just kind of like, fuck it, this is what I like, and. I, there's got obviously there's people who like it because I've got like fucking a million follow views on this video and I got a million views on this video so I'm going to see how much even further I can push it. Honestly, I have no interest in pushing any kind of boundaries yeah. or uh, or pushing the envelope or whatever the coin of phrase is. For me, it's all about. I mean, if you know, if you watch all of my cartoons, you'll notice that some of them are a little bit blue and some of them aren't at all. Some of them you could probably show to a young child and have them enjoy it. Yeah. But it's never like it's never like a situation where I sit down and I decide, okay, this one is gonna be adult. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah, ones yeah. the ones that are uh more serioso are the ones that by coincidence, those ones are the ones that I came up with dark jokes for when I was writing them. Yeah. I mean, my only MO is you know, whatever I just put in the cartoon is the stuff that I find funny or interesting or so you're like your own kind of bar of entry. If you think it's funny, if you think it's, if you think it fits, then regardless of what kind of content it is, it ends up being that. Yeah, my process is um, extremely lax at this point. Mm. A lot of times, I don't even have a script or any kind of storyboard or anything. Oh, wow. I just wow. kind of do the shots as they go. Yeah, open up Flash, start drawing stuff, and huh. then piece things together once I'm done. Interesting. Wow. That's uh, that's really cool, actually. Well, yeah. I mean, you're saying that um, you know you don't really like to plan long term or ahead on these sorts of things, but you've been doing animation since you were animating since you were eight years old. So, I mean, at that point, were you just kind of like, I'm just going to keep going and see how far this will take me, or did you kind of have a did did you have a backup plan or coasted along with whatever it is that you did? Oh boy, I wish I had more interesting responses to these questions. <laughs> well, it's just more or less like, what did you do? Uh, yeah, yeah, like, it's like just, how did you get into all this stuff? Um, it's not. It's not a matter of like how I got into it. It's more a matter of I don't fucking know. Oh, man, <laughs> sorry, man, it <laughs> suck at being interviewed. No, no, it's okay. We're just trying to treat it like a conversation. Yeah. So I mean, just shooting the shit, man. Yeah. Okay, that's good to know. I have just been into cartoons. Ever right. since I was very little, hmm. and I thought to myself, you know, these things are fun to watch. I wonder if they would be fun to make. Hmm. The answer is no, they are not. <laughs> uh, That's fucking true. Yeah, because like anytime somebody asks you, it's like, oh, you work in cartoons and animation? That must be so much fun. And really, everyone it's we like know I who does it. a computer for like 12 hours a day. <laughs> yeah, I've gotten, exactly. way, I've gotten way fatter since I've started <laughs> yeah. making cartoons. It really sucks. But then, why do we do it? If it's if it's that miserable, why do we do it? It, it is kind of fun. I you know it's weird because I can tell you why. For me personally, oh, okay. I can't do anything else. I'd like to be a doctor. <laughs> I'd like to be like something that really contributes to society in a good way. But I right. See, I am on the opposite end of the spectrum of that. <laughs> I consider myself to be the world's most brilliant genius. <laughs> if I wanted to be rich, I would have been rich five years ago. Oh yeah. Yes, very much so. Mm-hmm. Unfortunate for the world, I am not interested in curing cancer. I want to make cartoons instead. It's very. <laughs> it's an interesting interpretation. I've never heard that one before. Yeah, mine's a little less interesting. I just. I think it is kind of fun. It's like when you sit down and you just get into that zone. That's fun. No, it's fun. It's and, like joking aside. It's definitely. You know, it can be a grind at times, but I wouldn't be doing it if I didn't like it. No, you know. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Because I, I mean. It's also really cool to hear people saying, I mean, it's a little different for us because we work on like show shows. So like mm-hmm. people be like, I like this show. And it's like, all right, I had about 90 seconds to do with that episode. Yeah. And then yeah. it was like a hundred other people. Sometimes you don't even know what the whole show is about either. You Sometimes just, you I just get to remember what parts I worked on. Yeah. When somebody says, do you remember when this happened? And you go, no, no. like, what the fuck are you talking? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, but I still really like when somebody's like, oh, I'm watching the show. I'm like, that's pretty cool. You seem like you so. really tried not to get, let any of this go to your head though, Max. Like you seem, it's just very, you seem like you are the most relaxed person yeah. I've ever okay, talked yeah. to <laughs> yeah. when it comes to animation. You're not like, well, you know, it has to do with this. You're like, you're like yeah. It's fucking cartoons. cartoons. I like cartoons. Yeah. The funny thing about that is that's definitely the way I am in my mind. Mm. 
Because in my like in my head, I am this like just the biggest fucking brilliant maverick <laughs> on the face of this planet. Everybody else is just a lowly peon. Uh, but I, you know, I can't let on. I can't talk like that and act like that because <laughs> people will think I'm a sociopath. Right. No. Fair enough. Like I mentioned earlier, you're mainly working on those pony videos now. What kind of, like, what kind of pushed you into doing that? Because all your stuff, for the most part, uh, if I remember correctly, seemed to be like original shorts and content and mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, with things like Jerry and the Northern Incident, and um, and I know you did the Mega sixty four cartoons, but I'm assuming you were commissioned for those. Uh, yeah. Um, the funny thing about the the whole pony thing is a lot of people, uh, you know, because these have been like, uh, just in terms of views, Yeah, they've been my most popular cartoons that I've made. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, excuse me. Sorry. I, <laughs> you know, because, uh, coincidentally enough, my most popular cartoons are also parodies. A lot of people are accusing me of making these solely with the purpose of making money in my mind the whole thing has been innocent enough uh basically what happened was i made the first one just because i thought it was a funny idea Mm -hmm. (laughs) i made it put it out there started to get a lot of views uh, eventually went past one million and that's never happened to me before and Mm -hmm. i appreciated that um and then i thought to myself wow this is really cool a lot of people are finally watching my cartoons wouldn't it be great if i could come up with more of these I started to think, well, could I do that? Then I came up with the idea of, what if I have more episodes, one for each pony, and they all kind of tell a story arc between all of them? And I, once I had that idea, I thought that was really cool. Then I started come up, coming up with the episodes, and as I did that, I thought the episodes were really cool. And as I did that, I started to get excited because I thought that, you know, whenever you kind of get a project in mind, you have this this stage at the beginning where you're excited about it because you think it's a really great idea and you want to see it set into motion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is kind of what, that was kind of the spark that initiated the whole thing happening. Mm -hmm. Once again, I think that's all innocent enough. Yeah. Yeah. Um, If you want to, if you want to consider me a sellout, then I guess that's your prerogative, but I don't know. Well, have you gotten any, um, like, has anyone from my little pony been like, Hey asshole. This is a children's show. Like, what the fuck, man? From like, the fr- from the people who work at the show? Yeah. Well, like, is anyone anyone involved? I guess maybe I could see people who work on the show be actually being like, "This is really cool." But people yeah. who are like, you know, higher ups who'd be like, "What the fuck?" Like, we're, you know, suits. Yeah, exactly. I haven't gotten any suits. I've gotten a lot of uh, fans of the show who don't like my cartoons. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had some people who work on the show. I think the director tweeted about it. He said he really thought it was funny. Uh huh. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. That's nice. Yeah, you know, it's nice to get a little recognition from the people who work on the show, I guess. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. I cuz when we were when Adam was showing me the stuff and I watched it, I was thinking in my like the back of my head, I'm just like oh jeez, I hope like, you know, you yeah, yeah. Yeah, like Doesn't when you said shit, like, yeah, like bro come up your ass about it. Exactly. It's they're just, you know, cuz I mean, it is it's extremely popular now, like you said, you're these are the characters that have been getting like most of your views and stuff, right? So uh-huh. You know. Well, I'm sure I'm sure they have seen it. I'm wondering what kind of uh what they must be thinking, though. I mean, I'm not really, like, legally, I'm not really sure that there's anything they can do, because as long as it's a parody, you're allowed to do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't think they have much of a case against me, so. No, fair enough. <laughs> Suck it, bitches. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's also one of those things where, like, and I mean, I realize I'm not a swanky-ass businessman, but mm-hmm. in the long run, you're kind of just helping to promote the show, it seems like to me, because, you know, and... and I don't know, man. I it, It's one of those things, like, my wife is a big fan of uh, My Little Pony, and then she kind of introduced me to your pony cartoons. Mm-hmm. And um, then I started reading Jappalack, and then I started going through your history on YouTube, and I was like, I've seen a bunch of this dude's work before. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. like, it seems to be bringing into people to you, and maybe somebody sees your cartoon, has no fucking clue about My Little Pony, and then is just like, maybe I should check this show out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, honestly, I feel like... My my best conjecture would have to be to assume that the reason that these videos are so popular is because there's already such a huge fan base of the of bronies out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that I'm kind of piggybacking on. Right. Uh but that's cool because I would imagine that maybe not a lot of them have seen my cartoons. Yeah. So now they can check those out. Has there been like an overall uh, uh like 
raising of views since these ponies? Like, I mean, on all your video, excuse me, on all your videos, not just uh, the pony ones. Um, unfortunately, not that I've noticed. Mm -hmm. I think my subscribers might have gone up a little bit. It's hard to it's hard to get subscribers. It's a totally different entity from getting views on a single video because you know yeah. some, somebody might watch a video and say like oh I like this but I don't feel compelled to subscribe yeah, yeah. You know? that's, that's totally me <laughs> I but, see I mean yeah. it, it's interesting too because we're not we don't have any experience with um, like being serious YouTube dudes yeah we're like not mm -hmm. we're not partners or anything with them so well, it's, I've yeah. never I think you uploaded one video once I did? Yeah. Oh, for like with on our pod for the pod. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then myself, like I watch a shitload of videos, but I don't even really have an account. Yeah, I don't think I subscribe to anything on YouTube, like my own well, account. I'm gonna personally. do it now. I'm subscribing to you, Max. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because um, we are kind of at an interesting time mm -hmm. right now because there are a lot of rumblings of people making predictions that YouTube could very well be, it could become like the forefront of the entertainment industry mm -hmm. because there are videos on YouTube that get more views than, you know, people go to see movies or people no, watch sure. TV shows. So if that's true, then how come advertising is bigger in movies and TV than it is on the internet? Yeah. It's so uh, weird that you've opened up this can of worms. We were actually talking about this, like, fucking, like, 40 minutes ago. At dinner, At just dinner. before, yeah, we were saying the exact same thing. So there might be a paradigm shift in the future in the way things work. And yeah. Well, I'm hoping because, I mean, as we were talking about earlier, I don't fucking, I mean, I work all the time, but I, I don't watch TV. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have time to sit down and watch a show that I like when they decide to show it to me and sit through. You should these... quit your job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's... I'd like to, but I mean, there's also the bills that have kind of come well, in the way. Well, but I was going to say, like, with YouTube, like, again... So, for instance, like, I like watching cartoons on YouTube, so I like watching your shit. I like watching, obviously, like, the standard stuff where it's, like, Eagle Raptor and Happy Harry and all that shit. And I don't, I can watch it when I want to. And minus those, like, 10-second advertisements, I really don't have to, you know. But then I, I look at your views and I look at everybody else's views on YouTube. It's kind of seems crazy to me that you guys aren't getting more money in advertising. Like, it, To be fair... My, like, my greatest fantasy has always been to work in television, mm -hmm. and I would much rather do that than make stuff for the internet. For you know, for starters, the demographic of people who watch things online is very different from the demographic of people that watch things on TV, and as such, things that are popular online wouldn't work in television. They wouldn't work in movies. People wouldn't turn on a TV and watch Ray William Johnson they'd say why is this on my television mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but on the inter but on the internet it's huge yeah well, so you know yeah well i i know like some people that have started creating content on the internet are almost trying to transition to tv do you think they've got a shot or like because you just said yeah i mean what you said made sense to me like sometimes it doesn't seem quite like the transition would necessarily work but mm -hmm. it seems to be like the attempt is there i don't know i mean i would like to make that transition yeah I've often kind of felt that in a lot of ways what I'm doing is I'm trying to emulate the kind of entertainment that you would get from a television show or a movie mm -hmm. Hmm. Um, as opposed to other entertainment on the internet, which I'm kind of uh, not as much a fan of. Mm -hmm. I love the way I love the way TV works. I love the way you know you have these shows that have these characters that you can get to know and and form relationships with and every week you tune in to see another one of their adventures and you don't get that kind of experience on the internet you just don't yeah i you know i never thought of that you know um, i mean it yeah you know i mean i guess hmm. i guess it all depends though i mean what content is being uploaded and what is being given to you on tv because i mean yeah there's a ton of shit on the internet but there's also a ton of shit on tv as well too it's only the very few selective but, but types of shows that are what i think he's saying and i i agree with him is that like there's not that you know like for instance i really like venture brothers yeah. there's nothing mm -hmm. like venture brothers on the internet mm -hmm. and i actually give a shit about the characters in, yeah in venture brothers yeah. and, right. but because there's not like it's very rare you see something like episodic on the internet with the same characters. It tends to be like, yeah, 
it's almost like a, it could be an audience though that we're not familiar with because we try to fo- well we mainly focus on a lot of like i'm just going to categorize it as nerd stuff but just like you know cartoons games and shit like that but i mean think about like i don't know moms who parent and shit like that there might be stuff on the on youtube that they tune in where it's like some family basically doing their own reality show that they're just uploading every every couple of weeks or something and you get to see those characters quote unquote there definitely know. is stuff like that well, there you go so i mean um, i mean for that audience right but yeah i mentioned you know like i said before the paradigm shift yeah i you know i don't know if so, if some kind of changing of how things work is actually going to happen but you i don't think that you're really ever going to get something like lost on the internet i don't think that's going to happen and because that's never going to happen I, I I feel like television is just a more interesting medium uh, and more entertaining to me, at least. Well, mm. I, I would almost assume that if, like, let's, if that paradigm were to shift, it would almost seem like the internet would have to be a little more like TV. And I mean, I guess they're kind of doing that with Apple TV and they're, shit, aren't they? Well, I mean, I'm yeah. just, yeah. Like, I mean, are you talking about Apple, like the, the hub that basically connects you with all the shows that you can watch whenever you watch stuff? Or are you talking about like the Apple TVs that they're making? I would imagine both. I'm going to assume that you can get things like iTunes on those Apple TVs that they're making, or maybe probably they're trying to connect Obviously. everything. Yeah. Well, it, think about, um, you know, YouTube. It has the word "tube" in the title. They're trying to make it synonymous with television. They're trying to emulate what television yeah. was doing. Yeah. They're trying to make, you know, they're trying to put it in people's heads. Going to this website is like watching TV. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But there's still not what separates the content that's produced for the internet as opposed to the content that's produced for TV isn't just uh, the kind of stuff that it is. It's also the way that it's produced, the way that it's made, the way that it's funded, a whole bunch of different little factors. Yeah. I mean, I guess it all depends too on what the audience is looking for. I mean, look at this younger generation that's coming up. I mean, the ones who are just little kids right now. Um, mm-hmm. It's it's hard to say like what – is going to grasp their attention. Some yeah. of them would be more preferred just to fucking like watch tiny clips that aren't going to entertain them too much. I mean, I, like, here's the thing I watched, I watched the artist recently and I thought that movie was really good, yeah. but I mean, you're there, there are people who go back and leave the theater and they were like demanding refunds. Cause there's no, no one's talking in it. You know uh-huh. what I mean? So there's little, there's little things like that where some people are like, what this is fucking thing is, is an hour long. I'm not going to fucking watch this. You know what I mean? Like that's what if that could happen? Right. So, you know, where they prefer just to have like instant stimulation and they go to video after video after video. So I don't know. <laughs> That's another reason to believe that the par- like I'm I'm I've used the phrase paradigm shift so many times by now. But that's another <laughs> like an that's another so reason to believe that something like that really could never happen. Because if you took Lost and you put it on the internet, would anyone care? Would the internet audience be interested in something like that? Mm. Or would they just want to continue to watch Ray William Johnson or whatever? Well, I mean, I guess it all depends on what audience on the internet you're looking for because i mean i guarantee you that the mom audience that are watches those online reality shows that people put on youtube are not the same ones who are g- going to be watching like i don't know um epic meal time that's true but there's also uh you can generalize i think that the internet audience is very different from the tv audience that audience is different from the movie audience which is different from the music audience which is which is different from the book audience they're yeah. all different uh, and you know, you do have to kind of make generalizations. Yeah. yeah. And um, generally speaking, what one of those audience, what what one of those audiences is like, will not really appeal to the other. Well, I think the other thing to think about this too is that the internet, with especially with YouTube, it's still kind of in its baby stage. Yeah. I mean, when TV came out, a lot of people were like, "Why the fuck am I going to go to the movies still? Like, if I can just watch oh, yeah. it at home, you know?" So I mean. It kind of be, TV be kind of came its there's own. There's some people that are still like, I love the the, the theater experience. Exactly, no, that's I what I'm saying. Like the th- people, yeah, I love the, going to the theater. Right, the theater never went away, and even when the movies came out in cinemas, people were like, oh fuck, this is the end of the plays. People aren't going to come to the shows. They're still, right. they're still around. I do like so, theater. Yeah, so I mean, the, what I'm saying is like, this is just the baby stage for the internet, and something uh, like a genre will come out for it, right? Like a. But I mean. He made a good point too when he said, "Like, would the audience respond to that?" Like, because I don't know. I'm thinking, like, I'm trying to think of shit that my dad watches. Or, I don't know. Let's say you've got like a 15 year old man that likes, excuse me, that likes Breaking Bad. Uh-huh. Would he go watch that online if it was online? 
Uh, well, I don't know. I mean, I think it'd be a different system that'd be created later on down the road where people, I don't know, just yeah. the way that, like, cause when you say like watch something on the internet, I mean, it's your, it depends what device as well. Do you know? Cause like when you say That's people true. watch on TV, you automatically think you got to sit down in front of a couch couch at, or, or like in your room and watch it. Whereas when you say internet, you're looking at mobile devices, computers, um, your actual TVs, uh, tablets, you know, so I mean, it, man, this is the most I've ever thought about this. <laughs> yeah, Adam's <laughs> mind is getting. I'm just boring. like, holy shit! It's not as simple as I fucking thought it was. <laughs> oh man. Um, yeah. For me, for me, it's uh, it's kind of uh, you know the bottom line of the issue is, ever since I was little, I was you know as pathetic as it is, I've been enamored with television shows. <laughs> uh. I love the I love the idea. I love everything about them. I love that they're a half hour long. I love that it's the same characters every week. I love that we get to know them. Uh, if if content like that is ever produced for the internet, then that's great. I don't think it's going to happen for a lot of different reasons. But if it if it ever were to happen, I would be interested to see it. Mm. You know. Yeah, it's. Adam's very perplexed. He looks no, like I'm Atlas just, right now. Yeah, I'm thinking, I'm like, it, you know, because I never thought of it that way before. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and you know, I always say it's like, oh, I don't I don't watch TV anymore, but I will happily buy, like, the new DVD of Futurama or whatever and sit and watch it. Hmm. Futurama? Yeah. Futurama. Did I say Futurama? Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, you know, like, I'll sit down and watch DVDs and stuff. Yeah. And it's, you still get that same feeling of, like, characters. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I love Netflix. I've been watching The Wonder Years on yeah. Netflix. That's a lot of fun. I put that on while I'm animating. Do you remember The Wonder Years with Fred Savage? No, Adam doesn't know what he's. I, gonna have to I look don't know what that. The yeah. Wonder Years is. Fred Jeez. Savage was uh, Ben Savage's older brother. He was in that Nintendo movie, The Wizard. Uh, okay, I know The Wizard. Okay. Yeah, no, I'll look that up now. <laughs> yeah, Netflix yeah. is great. Well, I mean, here in Canada, though, we don't have the, a very good selection, though. Yeah, um, our Netflix is weak. Yeah, it's pretty shitty. I feel like a lot of people are very quick to complain about the selection that's on Netflix because I feel like what people do is they in the states just anywhere. I feel like what people do is this, they go on Netflix and they come up with some really obscure thing they want to watch and they think, "Hey, I'll check to see if that's on there." And then it isn't and then they get mad. Yeah. Well, no, but it's like for me, I never had an active desire to watch The Wonder Years and I never would have ever thought of watching it until I saw it was on there and I, you know, well, to be fair, we know that in Canada, we were not as strict with our, um, I guess copyright laws would be, no, maybe not copyright, but oh, there were certain, I don't know any of these. No, no, we weren't, no, it. no, here's what it was, is that our, our government didn't enforce the piracy stuff very much. So like mm -hmm. when a lot of, uh, uploads were occurring from films and stuff, they were finding out as a lot of it was from Quebec. A lot of it was from, uh, other parts of Canada. And so the states were like in the entertainment industry were threatening to be like, listen, if you want these fucking movies to come out the same day as in the states, you know, you gotta stop all this piracy upload. And they were up here. We were just kind of like, yeah, we'll get right on that. And we didn't. So then when Netflix comes along and we got, you know, we do have variety in it, but we, you know, from the most part, most of uh, Canadian people, they're just kind of like, what the fuck? Where's a lot of these shows that we thought would be on that you have on the U.S. one? They're just like, well, maybe if you smarten up and change your piracy laws, uh, which we are doing apparently, we've, you know, we didn't uh, know any of that. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So another uh, another piece of the puzzle is that. A lot of movies and uh, TV shows are like, well, TV shows specifically are like not allowed to be released on DVD because of uh, music that they have. Oh, like yeah. the, the Wonder Years like has so much Beatles music in the soundtrack, mm -hmm. and uh, you know that stuff was cleared for when it was airing on television. But right. of course, back when they were making that show, DVDs didn't exist yet, so there's this whole legal issue. And so, you know, it's hard to get that stuff released anywhere. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. That's, yeah. yeah, there's so many technicalities because you do think like, why isn't this show available? It's been out for like, it's been off the air for so long and then it finally comes out and you're like, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now they just have kind of like uh, perpetuity contracts that cover everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's always a lot of business behind all that that nobody ever hears about. And well, you just think of like, why isn't it? Why isn't this here? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're right, though, I think, about the Netflix thing, because I know, 
Like, there's some shit that's so old and so kind of niche that you can't even find it on the yeah, internet. Yeah, like, if like you're, no, no, sites, for sure. Right? If you're trying like to look it, for, I mean, fucking some of the first earliest film, I, I mean, okay, I haven't perused Netflix as much, as, like, I've just sort of seen kind of a basic overview of what we have, but, I yeah. mean, if you're looking for, like, early French Polynesian films that were <laughs> first created to show, like, what film could do, and someone's like, well, fuck this, I can't find these on there, you know, obviously. Yeah. But, you know, for the most part, we, we have a we have an okay selection in it's Canada. It's gotten a lot better. Yeah, it has gotten better. But. Well, thinking about this now, once once I add uh, Netflix into the into the equation, mm-hmm. now I'm thinking I might have to uh, kind of eat my words about the whole paradigm shift, because Netflix is very much an instance of you going and watching a television show on your computer. Mm. So much uh, so that you know they're making. New episodes of um, Arrested Development. Oh shit! Yeah, and they're making and they're airing them directly on Netflix before they're anywhere oh. else. Yeah, that's true. That's I crazy. guess that's the ultimate example. That? Of what I meant. Wow, it's well, content it, being produced for the internet. Yeah, I mean, Netflix, the thing about Netflix that I've always liked, and I've never used the service when I should, um, but uh, it seems like a marriage of the internet and TV. Because I know usually when it comes to watching TV on the internet, a lot of people complain. I want to sit at my fucking computer and watch. TV, yeah, like, get a get a laptop, idiot. Well, yeah, well, but <laughs> no, but I mean, they want the the big. They want uh, they bought the this TV big fucking TV. Everything and, switches oh, yeah. to the com- everything switches back to the computer, and but they're now like, what those the fuck? TVs can be hooked up to laptops, exactly. And yeah, um, and it's so it's one of those things where like Netflix kind of seems like that nice marriage now. Yeah, well, they took the video the the idea of going to the video store and brought it home, you yeah. know, without having to deal with getting somewhere, returning something. Honestly, I don't mind just getting my laptop and lying it on my chest and lying in my bed. No, no, fair <laughs> enough. I feel, I feel like that's similar enough to watching television. No, no, fair enough. I mean, it depends on all what your experience you want to have while enjoying a film yeah. or a TV show. Very much so. Mm-hmm. But anyways. Um, well, I, I wanted to ask you for your videos, the stuff that you do. Like how, I mean, I know you said you have a really unconventional uh, uh, pipeline, I guess. Um, how long does it take you to make one of those? This is a question that I get every day. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Sorry. Um, no, that's okay. Uh, there's no time frame that I can give you because it's different for every cartoon. It's done when it's done. It, very much so. But the really only answer that I can give is when I finish a cartoon, usually within a few days, I start on the next one. Yeah. So if you want to see how long it took me to make a cartoon, compare its release date with the release date of the one before it, and there's your answer. Do you... Um... Are you, uh, do you have any siblings? Like, are you just, are you, like, your your family, what do they think of uh, all the work that you do? And you're like, yeah, I upload these cartoons online, and... I think my parents really hate cartoons. Really? <laughs> um, I have a sister, but I think she's, like, a health instructor at a gym or something. <laughs> you're not even, you're, you're just like, I don't know what the fuck she does. <laughs> I, know, I know she works at a gym. I don't know if she teaches jazzercise or what, but, um... <laughs> I no, that's I interesting. Don't... Your parents hate cartoons, and here you are. You've you just like, hi mom, hi dad. I have a million views on this one thing I did, yeah. and they're just like, you're a disgrace. <laughs> also, I'm a ventriloquist. Happy oh, yeah? birthday, dad. Happy birthday, dad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a ventriloquist. No. That's a lie. Oh, well, um, you shouldn't have said that. We have no way to prove that you're exactly, lying. Exactly. Yeah. yeah I don't. I don't know how they really feel about cartoons. They've never really seemed that interested in them. But the work that you do, like, I mean, do you ever kind of like? Do you say like? Holy shit! Look what I was able to do. Or are you just kind of like it doesn't really it doesn't phase them, so it does no real need to. I think they probably follow me online enough to know. Yeah. But I don't. I would imagine that they don't really like my cartoons very much. Wow, that's interesting. I was, I was just because I mean Adam and I both, you know, we work in animation, and it's just like that parental kind of. Oh, you did this. That's so great, and you really just kind of go, uh, "That's really not that great." But thanks. Well, I, I just, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> it's no. it's one of those things where you talk to people who have no idea how it works. They're just like, "Oh, that's neat." Yeah. No, mm-hmm. fair enough. Like that must be easy. Mm-hmm. What's your production crew like for doing this? Because I mean, when, when you watch the videos, like your cast, your music, and stuff like that, it's like I said, it's very well done. Yeah. So, um, where are you able to kind of? How, how did you do all that? Well, for animation and stuff, it's just me. That's just it's you, just, and creating all the. All the cleanup and stuff. Wow. It's just me with uh, Flash, After Effects, and Premiere. Wow. And that's it. Nice. And most of the voices are me. 
Um, once in a while, I might get a friend or two to help me with voices, but yeah. usually, usually I like to rely on myself for the most part because other people are very unreliable. I find. Uh, well, the, uh, what about the music? Music is usually uh, I just get that um, from like a from like a library of royalty free stuff or whatever. So wow, you, that's like, royalty free. I was that's gonna really say like shit. the the skeletons playing their bones like xylophones. Did that you isn't, like? That isn't. Yeah. Um, that is. That was done by a, a friend of mine named Dana. She uh, kind of is a music freak. Oh, yeah. And I told her, I need, I'm doing a, a parody of the Fat Albert intro mm-hmm. song. I need, a, I need what it would sound like if you were to mix Fat Albert with like a song from Corpse Bride or something, just like z- z- ghost music or whatever. And she mm-hmm. whipped that up and she did a great job. And then I wrote new lyrics for it. And that's all it was. No, it was really interesting. Yeah. You know, pretty good. Yeah. I'm pretty impressed, man. Like, you've. <laughs> Royalty free music doesn't usually sound that good. Like, no, exactly. So when we you. Were, yeah, we were watching, like, the Northern Incident. And... Yeah, that's. All that was royalty free stuff. Wow. wow. That's really depends good. On what, it depends on what you get. Yeah, no, for sure. There's, like, a million sites out there, too, and they just yeah. say royalty free, and it's, some of it's just, like, you know. Friggin' like one guy piano. That's it. And mm-hmm. Everything's gonna have this bad like recording Super to it. Synthesizer yeah, like eighties porno. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I mean, I you know I do have to spend a lot of time searching for that kind of stuff. I have to search for a lot of sound effects. Um, from what I've uh, found, if uh, you're working on a cartoon, you're gonna be able to find all the sound effects easily. But once every cartoon, there's going to be one sound effect you won't be able to find. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For the one that I just put out yesterday, it was the sound of a bottle being spun. For the part, for right. the part where they're playing "Spin the Bottle," and if yeah. you listen to that part, it's the bottle sp- spinning doesn't sound like a bottle at all. It just sounds like a wheel or something. <laughs> yeah, um, well, I mean, you don't. This is the thing too with cartoons: the cartoon logic of stuff. You don't notice that stuff. I you suppose know, if you're not what I mean, the thing is you get so wrapped up in what's happening. You're waiting to, for, for the next that. lead to go into the next thing. You know, something doesn't throw the only thing that re- it has to be a real big fuck up for it to really throw you off. Like for me, when I was a kid, and I'd be watching Batman, the cartoon, if his <laughs> if his insignia, the bat signal w- would switch from black to yellow and the circle like Did just for happen? one. F- yeah, like the painters would fuck up on painting yeah. the thing like that's something as a fuck up. But it goes by so quickly. You don't usually notice. Mm hmm. So. Yeah, that's I cool. feel like um, a lot of the times when I watch cartoons, I spend the majority of the of my time watching it thinking to myself, they're not drawing the characters right, and it makes me not able to enjoy anything. Are these shows that you're referencing, that you're analyzing, are these shows that, when you say draw, because I mean, a lot of stuff that we work with is Toon Boom or Flash based, Yeah. Um, are these older shows then that you, you know, that you... Yeah, like traditionally done right, stuff. Okay. So stuff like back from the 80s, 90s, and things like that? Yeah, well, it's not like there's no traditional yeah. animation on TV anymore. That's true. Well, there's still was, a lot of stuff on there. Like, yeah. Well, like... I don't. I mean, I know I work in animation, but fuck, what, what well, shows are... Like, mm-hmm. some of the stuff, like a lot of the stuff done out of California, like, um, um, like Venture Brothers. Is, okay, all right. And I know... I. It, I would you... Uh, my assumption is that that's almost a product of kind of shipping it overseas. Mm-hmm. Because I know, again, yeah. speaking of Venture Brothers, they had a huge, huge problem. Yeah, right? you go over their blogs and stuff. Like, apparently there was one episode where you could barely tell that the characters were yeah. who they were supposed to be. Get out of here. And it actually went through? No, they fucking redid it. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'd love to see what that looked like. Yeah. Sweet, man. I, I, I'm curious. Uh, for the Mega 64 stuff, did they approach you about that? or? Um, I made the first one. Mm. And then I got uh, an email from Rocco. And he said, that was really cool. If you want. Like we would, we would love if you could make some more of these for us. Mm-hmm. And I was like super honored because I'm I'm such a massive fan of those guys. And uh, they said, "Yeah, we want you to make some more, and we'll put them up on our channel." And I said, "All right." And I uh, just did some more for them, and they put them up. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah, I was very excited. Sweet. It seems to be the case when we've heard other stories like that. With um, I don't know if you're I don't know if you're familiar with Steve Stark, but he does the Stark tunes for Kevin Smith's. Um, podcast like he'll take audio clips from his uh, different shows and then he'll yeah. make his own animated and cartoons he just to did it. The first one for shits for, and giggles, and, and then they contacted him too. So yeah, 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 that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Do you think you're ever going to release like a DVD or something of all your stuff? I'm assuming you get that question a lot. I do get that question a lot, but I don't. 
I don't really understand what incentive anyone would have to buy something like that. I guess I could understand the incentive to sell it because I would make money, but I don't like what if 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 my cartoons were on a DVD, why would you buy them? Why would you buy that? Because you can watch them online. Well, I think part of it is in that the idea is that you, I mean, either buy it or download the episodes if you could, and you're actually paying the, they're basically paying you, saying that you, they support your work. I don't know. I mean, isn't that the general idea? I mean, it's it's weird because he's right, but at the same time, there are people that would buy it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, back when um, Strong Bad was, <clears throat> back when Strong Bad was really popular, I bought yeah. a DVD of that. And I really like Strong Bad, but I, I watched the DVD and I instantly regretted buying it because I was like, man, these cartoons are on the internet for free. Why did I pay for this? Mm. So don't buy Strong Bad stuff. <laughs> I say okay, boycott I that. I haven't seen that stuff since we like... I haven't watched it in ages. Grade 10 or something yeah. like that. I'm assuming they're still kicking. I don't nope. So. nope. They're they gone. quit. Yeah. Really? They yeah. up and quit. Holy... F- wow. I had no fucking clue. It's great. It's been wow. gone for a few years now. Wow. Pretty sad, actually, I think. Is, they had games. Uh-huh. They had everything. You just blew Adam's mind oh, again. It. Again, yeah. <laughs> well, fuck, That's man. what I'm known for. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm just kind of curious. Like, Is there anything uh, anything like lately that's been inspiring you specifically with uh, the making of your cartoons? Like, What kind of shit are you a fan of? Uh, I mean, right now I've... I'm not really into anything. I just played that game with the uh, Cripple Girls. You know that one? Oh, the one that was made on 4chan? Yeah. Yeah, I've heard of it. I just played it, and I was, uh, you know, I've heard of that game, and I was like, yeah, that sounds pretty funny, but I don't need to play it. Mm -hmm. And a friend of mine uh, messaged me the other day. He said, dude, have you heard of this? I said, what? There's a game where you date mentally handicapped girls. And I said, are you thinking of the one where you date girls with disabilities? And he said, no. In this one, they're mentally handicapped. And I said, That one made on 4chan too? I said, I have to play that because that's like my dream come true. (laughs) So I'm down, right. And I'm downloading it. And then as I'm downloading it, I'm looking on the website and I realize he got it wrong. It is the Cripple Girl game. And I was disappointed, but I was like, well, I'll play it anyway. And I played it and I really liked it. Um, there's this whole there's this whole subculture of uh, visual novels they're called mm-hmm. that I've been getting into. Uh, my problem with the genre is I think it's a really cool medium for telling a story, and I think they're really fun games. They're completely monopolized by like anime stuff. I think and I know that, what you're talking about. That needs to end. They're all they're all anime stuff, and they're all uh, dating simulations. Yeah. And I think I need to put a stop to that. Oh, that'd be sweet. Do it. So uh, that might be my next big thing. Oh, that'd be cool. Sweet, man. Yeah. Well, awesome. Like, this has been... I fucking feel like I learned a lot, especially about TV. A bunch of shit I never th- thought of before. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, sweet, man. Thank you very much for uh Yeah, we really appreciate taking the time into awesome. this. That's it. We're done? Yeah, man. It's been yeah, 50 we just... minutes. All right. Awesome. Nice well, uh, enjoy your evening. I don't know what your plans are. If uh... mm-hmm. No? Yeah. No. Drinking. Right. Drinking. It's already 10, and I'm buzzed, so I might just go to bed. Fair enough. Sweet, man. All right. Well, uh, for Guys with Pencils, uh, I'm Andrew Murray. Adam Hines. And you've been talk- listening to... Uh, Max. 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 Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got to start briefing people on that. Totally. All right. All right, well, brother. Thank thanks you for very listening. much. Yeah, I, you know, uh, that's all, folks. <laughs> <laughs>